get a mic. Let's start with that. And then Jim. Coach, there wasn't real high expectations for this defense when you guys got here. Did you take that as a personal challenge to get the most out of these guys? Well, I think I think as coaches, um, you know, that's what you always want to do. You want to you want to get the most out of your players, and you want to push them uh, to greater heights. Uh, you know, so you know, I don't know that we didn't have the expectations. I mean, you know, obviously when you come in, you know, everybody's competitive that's in this business. And we all come in and thinking that we, you know, we're going to be good and we're going to compete and we're going to strain and we're going to try to go out and, and play at a championship level. And that's the thing that we asked these young men to buy in and believe uh, when we got here, that you know, if they would you know, play as one, you know, if we could get 11 guys playing with one heartbeat, that we felt that we could be pretty good, that if we just put our heads down and just focus one day at a time, one practice at a time, one game at a time, and just see where it took us to. Ron, you've coached a lot of years. You've coached at a number of SEC schools. And I wonder, Tim Banks has been nominated for the Broyles Award. Just talk a little bit about him and the job you feel like he's done. I think Coach Banks has done a remarkable job. Um, you know, he's a, he's a great leader. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's very... Uh, I think he's very smart. Um, you know, he's you know he's flexible. You know, obviously he tries to cater, you know, what we're doing to to what the our our talent level is and what we're capable of doing. And uh, you know, he he's open to suggestions. Um, you know, I think he's a he's a really good leader. The kids believe in him. Uh, the staff believes in him, and uh, you know he's a great guy to work with. Just like you know this entire staff, you know I think that's the one thing you know that Coach Hype's done. You know he's put together uh, a group of a remarkable men that that right now get along well and they work well together. Good chemistry. Coach, I, I would imagine communication is key for a head coach. How would you assess uh, how Coach Hype is as a communicator? I think Coach Hype does an outstanding job of communicating uh, to us his expectations, the expectations of this program, uh, what, what our goals are, long term, short term, um, you know, what, what, what it is he expects from us individually, collectively. Uh, I think he's a really good leader. Um, you know, obviously he's very competitive. Uh, I think that shows every day that we come into this building. You know, he's, he wants to win. You know, it's 1-0 and every day. I mean, that's how he approaches it, and that's how he's trying to program these young men to think. And, uh, you know, I think he's done a, a remarkable job, and I and look forward to where he's going to take the program going forward. Vince. Rodney, Amar Thomas said the one thing that you ask for from your guys is when they get older to send you pictures of their kids and they want them to be you know, great husbands. How much of an impact through your experience does really showing that you're invested in them as human beings impact them as football players? Well, I, I just try to pour into these young men like, you know, I remember – my coaches poured into me, you know, when I played, you know, you know, being a poor kid from, you know, small town Alabama. You know, I, I think the kids, you know, they don't they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And, uh, you know, obviously with my coaching style uh, being as demanding, you know, as I try to be with them, you know, they've got to know that I care about them uh, more than just on the field. And, it, and it's, a, it's a deeper commitment uh, for them to allow me to push them and, to, and try to strain them to get the, get the good stuff out of them. So, uh, you know, it is personal. And, you know, to me it's not a, a four-year, you know, relationship. It's a lifetime relationship. And, you know, and I just think back to the young men that I recruited when I was at Auburn the first time and really relationships that I had with them and the guys that I had here previously. I got a chance, you know, to see Peyton and Trey Teague last week. And, you know, just those – that's what it's all about, you know. And then, you know, Charles Grant came up for the game this week bought his son Jonathan Sullivan was here you know so it's just good to just to hopefully 
impact those guys' lives where they feel like I played some type of role in, in, in their success and, and that they want to still have a relationship with me, uh, you know, beyond this. Coach, what has Matt Butler meant to your group and what's it been like to kind of coach him over the past however many months it's been? Oh, <laughs> Matt's a unique individual. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, you know, he's, he's very, very – Intellectual, very smart. Uh, it's probably the smartest guy I've ever coached uh, by far. Uh, but uh, he, he's a great young man. He, he's a man of character. Uh, he works really hard. Uh, you know, I, I've really enjoyed, you know, watching Matt, uh, I feel like, improve his game and, uh, and play at, at, a, at a higher level. And, uh, and, have, and I think he's. You know, I think he's, you know, having some relative success and doing some really good things. And, uh, you know, he comes to work every day. Uh, he wants to be good. He wants to be pushed. You know, he's tough. You know, he can, you know, he can take it. You do it the best of him. And, uh, you know, he responds, you know. So, you know, the whole room really is just, a, it's an enjoyable room. I've, I've really enjoyed watching these guys grow. And I've enjoyed watching them compete. And like them, like I told them the other day, you know, you know, obviously I'm disappointed that we hadn't had the success that we all wanted. But still, just to go out there and watch them game in and game out, how they go out there and compete, you know, they play hard. I mean, it's, you know, it's when I sit there and I watch the film on on Saturday nights after the game. Whenever we get in, you know, I was I'm amazed at how hard they're playing. You know, my thing is, you know, we've just got to learn to play smarter, you know, but they're straining for one another. They're competing for one another, you know, so that we, we have made progress there. And now we just got to get the component of playing smarter. Great, Jimmy and Wes. Yeah, Coach, when you looked at this team and you looked at your group in, in August, you didn't have a lot of numbers. How did you put a plan together to manage a small group you know, and, and get them better but not completely wear them out uh, as you head into these last two weeks? Did you manage that different than you would a typical group you might have? No, we're, we're always trying to, you know, to find, you know, you know, I've always said, you know, my goal was to always have ten guys, you know, that could play, you know, at a competitive level on Saturday. You know, that's, to me, that's ideal. You know, obviously I like to have 12, but, you uh, if we got ten guys, I feel like you know at least we can rotate them, and we can stay relatively fresh, uh, because you know the biggest thing that that you know I try to stress to them, you know I want I want to play the fourth quarter like we played the first quarter, and I want to see us run into the ball, and I want to see guys straining, and guys leaving everything they got on the field. I don't want them bringing anything back into the locker room. So for big guys, you know obviously you got to keep them fresh. I and mean, we've got to rotate them. And, you know, we, we've been blessed. You know, we've had some bumps and bruises, and we've had guys, you know, that are, you know, nicked up. But, you know, for the most part, you know, they found a way to fight through it. And, uh, and the one thing about it, you know, I think my guys see that, you know, hey, if you practice hard, you know, if you earn it in practice, you're going to get an opportunity to play. You know, if you don't, then you won't. So, you know, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a merit deal where they, they've got to go out every day and they've got to earn it and they've got to get it done. Rodney, uh, two things. When you look at the tackles for loss, the last two games, not as many as you had in the first eight. Is that a direct relationship to the competition you're playing? Well, you know, obviously we played some really good competition here lately. Uh, you know, but, you know, like I said, you know, we could do, when you sit there and you look at the film, you know, there's things that we can do better. Now, obviously we played two really good teams, and those teams were the better teams on those, uh, on, on, on this past Saturday anyway. They were the better team, but, you know, we still did some things that was probably a little bit uncharacteristic of some things that we have have done in the past, and we maybe uh, we missed the line. Uh, we didn't check certain things that we knew to check that we'd done. But you know, like I said, you know, when you look at it, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, but that's the thing that I tried to tell them. You know, we we're not good enough football team. 
where we can go out there and aid anyone in, in the opportunity to beat us. You know, we have to play at our best every every single game, and we have to execute at a high level. And, uh, you know, the, we compete at a high level, but our execution sometimes is not, you know, where it needs to be. So if we're paying attention to the finer details, then I think those things w will happen. You know, we didn't have the TFLs that we needed to have uh, this past game, and, there, and the opportunities were there. Sometimes it was just guy missed a line. Sometimes it was a guy just didn't run the run the, the assignment. Uh, so there, there's just technical things, and obviously we've got to coach it better too. So you know, it's not on them. You know, the only mistake that they can make in the game is not playing hard. Any any other mistake that belongs to us. And so as a coach, you know, I have to own that. And, you know, we've got to teach it better. And we've got to make sure that we're executing it better. Secondly, you mentioned the other day that there were 103 gradable snaps against Kentucky. And I know all your players didn't play all the snaps. But is it hard to recuperate in a week if you've played that many snaps in a game? No, I think the way, you know, Coach, coach Hype has our practice schedule, uh, I think it's conducive. Uh, to, to, to keeping our players fresh. You know, the model that, that we go with, uh, you know, on, on Mondays, you know, it's a stretch, get their blood pumping, move around, walk through. Then, you know, really our, our tough two hard days of work is, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then, you know, we tone it down a little bit on Thursday just to make sure we, we can go out there and execute assignments and, and get all our fits correct and then come back in Friday and crank it back up a little bit more and move at a little crisper uh, uh, pace. Uh, but I think the way he, he has it structured is really good. And, uh, and like I say, you know, you know, we're playing, we played a lot of snaps in the Kentucky game, but we played very poorly on third down. All right, so, you know, that's that's as much on us as anything because, you know, like I told them on third down, we got to be able to get off the field. I mean, you know, we're, we're in those opportunities. We get them in a third down situation. Now we got to be able to finish and we got to get off the field uh, and give our offense more opportunities uh, to score points. You know, we, we, you know, fortunately, we have a really good offense, so we need to play better and we need to get them the ball and, and let them do, do their thing. I know most quarterbacks these days tend to be pretty athletic, um, but on a weekly basis to see them sort of leak out of the pocket there on third down and scramble past the sticks, how, how do you fight that from being sort of demoralizing for your players for that same thing to keep happening? And is there anything that can be sort of coached up to, to correct that for now? Yeah, we, we've got to do a better job of standing in our lanes. We've got to do a better job of condensing and restricting and, and uh, keeping eyes on them and playing smarter. And, you know, that's things that we've got to work at and we've got to get better at it. You know, there's some of them that, you know, that, you know, you look at, you know, one play that come into mind. You know, last week that happened, it was purely athleticism. There was no way he was going to make that play. He was, he was so much more athletic than us. You know, so we've got to, you know, there's a lot of things that we've got to do uh, to get better. And that's what we're, we're constantly working at it. And uh, these guys, they're aware of it. Coaches, we're aware of it. And uh, we just got to keep working and, and keep improving. Last question really quick there. Yeah, like Matthew Butler, what has a guy like Jaquan Blakely meant for your group this year? Blake's, a, you know, a, a great young man. You know, uh, you know, you know, he comes to work. You know, he's a, you know, I guess he's a poor man's, you know, guy. You know, he's. I think you know he's. I think he's got an elbow. He's got an ankle. He's got a knee. You know, he's got a little bit of everything that's that's going on right now. But you know, he's a tough guy. You know, he's from South Georgia. You know, I think he loves football. He's just a blue collar kind of guy. He just comes out there and comes to work every day, you know. And I think he's getting the most, you know, out of his skill set, you know, that that he has. You know, I think he's he's probably maximizing it. Uh, you know, I think you know I've, I've talked to him, giving him a little bit of hard time. You know, possibly you know that hey man, if you know about you know ten pounds lighter, you may be a step or two quicker. But you know, he's just I think he's playing above. Um, you know, really, you know, his skill set, and uh, I've been I've been proud of him. You know, just the way that you know he works, 
he takes coaching. You know, he tries to go out there and he tries to apply it. And that's all that you can ask of any of them is that they try to apply what you're trying to teach. And hopefully they'll see themselves have some success and then they will buy into it more and believe in what you're doing. Thank you, Coach.